The Revol gets the rap as the dangerous neighborhood in Barcelona. And because of this, many visitors don't get onto the other side of La Rambla from the more friendly Gothic quarter. And unfortunately, they miss out on some pretty cool things. So in this video, I'm taking one for the team, heading over to El Raval to show you some of the hidden gems that you'll find if you make it over to this area. We'll see some of the best views of the city, an almost forgotten Gaudi building, another historical site that you would have never guessed was here or what it is, and much more. I just hope I make it out of here with my camera. Some of my favorite hidden gems are the ones that are hidden in plain sight. Those things that have been here kind of just always historically mean a lot to the city or the area, but many people that walk by don't pay much attention to it. And if you ask them what it was, they wouldn't really know. That circle right in the back behind me, a lot of people walk by daily and never really pay much attention to it. And I've taken in some different tourists around and asked them what they thought it was. Now, it's always interesting to see the tourists that are coming over from Madrid and have heard about those convents where you can get some cookies. What they all think that this might be is something that you could put in, see the money, put it in right there, and then maybe you can get some cookie. Now, there is an old convent that was just next door, but that is not what this is at all. This is actually known as the Foundling Wheel. And unfortunately, with all the poverty that's going on around the Revol, a lot of poorer families or even those single mothers wouldn't be able to care for their children. So many of them were placed inside of these convents, put right in here, turned around with this door, and then the nuns on the other side would take care of them. The charity house was opened in 1583, but it wasn't until the mid-19th century that the infant children were left to the nuns at the maternity ward and orphanage. It was actively in use until 1931. Now, what was that Casa de Misericordia was part of a bigger building that had the chapel, the convent as well, and what that convent and much of the area has been turned into is one of my favorite places in the city. Just around the corner, you've got La Central, a bookstore you don't want to miss. The Revol location is one of three La Central bookstores in the city. It's got an awesome selection of all types of books, including a pretty extensive English section. If passing by, I never seem to resist popping in and browsing around. And what was that 18th century chapel has been completely renovated to an incredible bar, just perfect for grabbing a book, a coffee, or just enjoying yourself. And one of my favorite spots to get over to and definitely show people around is the Hotel Barcelo Raval. Get up to the terrace, the rooftop has a 360 deck that'll give you views to the entirety of the city. We're always looking for some of the best spots to go, and from right here in the center, it really gives you a good lay of the land. Not only do we have the beautiful view out to Munjui, you've got Tibidabo, into the Gothic Quarter with the cathedral sticking out of it, but all the way into the distance, you can see the Sagrada Familia, and you can see all the work that's being done on it. I always love to bring groups over here, take a little bit of a view, maybe start the tour and get an idea of what you can see in Barcelona. It's great to come up in the afternoon, have a drink, got a little bit of a pool. It's not just for the people staying in the hotel. Free to come up, grab a drink and enjoy yourself. Not only do you have binoculars to get close-up views all over the city, but if you can catch it on a sunny day like today, there's nothing better. The Raval has always been closely linked to the church. In fact, it's one of the principal reasons why this area was brought inside of those city walls back in the Middle Ages. While there's not as many of them around the neighborhood as a whole, we do have one of the oldest churches in all of Barcelona right here. San Paul de Camp, or St. Paul of the Countryside, as his name suggests, was outside of those old city walls when it was first built. Now, we don't know the exact date of construction, but it's thought to have been a late 9th or even an early 10th century church. Because of the destruction of the church during the Muslim raid of Barcelona in 985, not much is known about its beginning. The discovery of Count Wilfred II's tomb offered some ideas for those dates. Much of the church was rebuilt in the 11th century and is one of the few Romanesque churches left in Barcelona. But its most impressive asset has to be the 12th century cloister, which you can still visit. The church offers visits from Monday to Friday for six euros and guided tours on Sundays if you want to get a little bit more information. 
while you can see a lot from the outside at street level, I would recommend getting onto the inside where you can see some of the most important parts of the church, including the cloister right here. One of the things that's really great about this is that it gets you into a past of Barcelona that's even older than many of the buildings in the Gothic Quarter. Maybe you walk down Parallel Avenue and notice the mural behind. One of the best parts about it is that it changes every single month. So if you come by in different times, you're gonna see something completely new. It's a whole art project run by Street Art BCN to really show off that street art throughout Barcelona. A lot of people always come around and ask about all of the graffiti, all of the paintings that they see along the walls. And while it's not legal to paint on walls, there are some spaces where it's permitted. The whole project started in 2016 to draw attention to the rehabilitation efforts for one of Barcelona's most famous 19th century theaters, the Arnau. Copied from Paris, the idea was to have a rotating space for artists. You can check out their Instagram account for past photos of murals and stop by while you're in town to see what each artist creates. One of my favorite parts is you can discover new artists every single month as they sign all of the pieces. Street Art BCN along with Save the Ardenau Gallery work and make this mural a possibility. It's right across the street from one of the biggest spaces that you can find all sorts of different street art, the Three Chimneys Park. But when you're in the Revol, there is one tourist attraction that I don't think it's talked about enough, and it's just down the street. So let's go check it out. The better known houses by Gaudi, the Casa Batio, and the Casa Mila get all of the buzz. They're the ones that are on everybody's list of places to go. And I won't disagree with you there. I always recommend getting over there and checking them out. They are amazing places. But there's an earlier house built by Gaudi designed for Usebiguel that's right here in the Revol, and nobody seems to talk about it. And if I have to be honest, it might be the best one. Gaudi built the Palau Güell between 1885 and 1890 and is the only residential work he has inside of the old city. At a time when most upper-class members were fleeing to the Eixample, where Gaudi would build both the Casa Patio and the Casa Milá, the Palau Güell was built in one of Barcelona's least luxurious neighborhoods. The family sold the house to the city in the 1940s, and along with the rest of the Gaudi buildings in the city, this became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1985. Now it's one of the few modernist houses that was built in the old part of the city. And it's not the easiest place to come and get pictures or see the house because of the narrowness of the streets. But from all around, you can see the difference from all the other houses that are here. Just from the front, you can see the Phoenix above the door, which is a representation of that rebirth of the Catalan culture and the Renaissance. You've also got an E and G and iron over those two main doors. For most people, it's always a surprise to find a Gaudi house in the center of the city, right off the Rambla, realistically. But trust me, getting inside is so much worth it. There is so much to uncover. Not only does it allow you to see a different side of Gaudi and an earlier style, but it's also the cheapest of his houses to get into. Because the Raval isn't as visited of a neighborhood, there are so many gems to explore around the area. So let me know with a comment below if I forgot any or if you found any on your trip here. And if you're looking for other hidden gems around the old part of the city, make sure to watch my video all about the hidden gems in the Gothic Quarter.